Hey and welcome back to the lab! And today here on the bench we have a very exciting product to share. So that is a thermal camera benchtop system from Teslon. And uh, that is really exciting because it has some nice features which really could be the game changer. And uh, therefore Let's have a look if the product is really that nice, what it looks like. So let's right go to the bench and let's test it. Okay, and here we are right with the box and let's see what is inside. Okay, so let's see what we have. Okay, and here we are getting closer. So, we have uh, a nice little instruction and uh, we have uh, here our base plate and uh, you already can hear it maybe, it uh, is all made uh, from metal so that is uh, not uh, a sheep uh, plastic or so, um, that uh, is metal which uh, is nice. So that is already uh, the camera and uh, that is here the stand. Okay, so looks pretty nice and okay we have here some uh, some paperwork and we have here a little tool and wires to connect to the system. That is what uh, we have in the box. Now let's try how easy it is or maybe how complicated it is to get the system uh, up and to uh, get it finally running. And of course it is very important that uh, we really can uh, get it together very easily. I mean, uh, you know, benchtop systems uh, for itself are uh, most of the time uh, very expensive and uh, well, so that is something uh, special, um, but uh, we will talk about that a little bit later. First of all, uh, for us it is uh, really, um, I'm really curious to see uh, how it uh, all uh, works uh, together and uh, I see that uh, we need uh, to yeah, connect here the stand uh, to the basic uh, plate and uh, well therefore we obviously um, need uh, two uh, screws and the screws I have seen, yes, so they are uh, in here, so let me prepare um, everything and uh, then uh, we go ahead. For how to install it uh, quickly, we have here in the manual, um, yeah, they advise uh, what uh, we should do step by step. I mean, that is a little bit uh, small, but uh, well, it is uh, obviously not so difficult. And on their web page, you get uh, here a nice picture how it uh, should look like. So, how uh, we get it managed, so it seems not to be so much complicated. Okay, and we have uh, four screws. We have this plastic piece. We'll see what uh, that is for. And uh, well, on uh, the picture we have seen that uh, the stand should get here. And uh, well, that means that uh, we need uh, to get it uh, screwed here somehow okay can you see it yes you can and we put uh, our screws in and uh, well there we can use here our little tool 
with uh, is delivered with the product that uh, is quite nice because maybe not everybody has the right uh, fit for uh, this cruise so okay and it seems to be reasonable nice this little tool it is working it's doing what uh, we uh, expect so that is already everything okay now um okay it is already nice Let me go here a little bit different here with the camera and uh, now okay so here we can adjust the high that is good and now that should be quite easy uh, we put here our camera in let's see okay so that works already okay it's moving a little bit so I have to check that and then this piece here gets most likely here um, to the boom to I don't know I believe it is uh, first of all that it is uh, here that you can't uh, pull it uh, out easily accidentally and maybe for um, the cable here which uh, we of course uh, need okay so uh, let me um, go ahead and let's see what we need to do next okay so I've recognized that uh, when I put it in here that uh, I cannot really uh, fix it but uh, yeah so that is uh, my fault because we need to prepare it here uh, a little bit um, and uh, therefore we oh, you can't see it if we have this uh, little plastic here and of course that uh, needs uh, to be uh, fit here into uh, our screw and then we can uh, fix this uh, uh, plastic uh, piece and we can turn it here but uh, we do not uh, lose it and now it uh, should be uh, possible uh, to uh, fix uh, our boom let's see if that is true Ah, now it is uh, now it is uh, perfect all right very nice so that is working now and uh, yeah so we uh, cannot really damage here um, our boom that is uh, very nice and uh, by the way uh, the touch and feel is uh, quite uh, nice so that all uh, is obviously metal and uh, that uh, is uh, very solid um, so the touch and feel is uh, really nice and uh, all uh, the adjustments here so that is definitely not uh, a toy um, definitely not okay uh, then we put here our plastic to the end that uh, we do not uh, pull it out accidentally that uh, is nice as well and uh, whoa, okay so we have uh, two screws uh, a spare and um, yeah we may use uh, this little tool because we have here some more uh, little screws anyways um, I would uh, say uh, it is um, ready so far so mechanically uh, it is uh, definitely uh, done um, so that was uh, to be honest quite easy um, no uh, problem 
And right here I really see the first uh, big advantage because, you know, that is a very flexible uh, system. I mean, you see, uh, we have it um, uh, built up as you can see it here and you see the distance here is uh, very low. So if you have uh, only a PCB to put it uh, underneath, uh, so from a mobile phone, so that is here a PCB from a mobile phone, it is uh, quite easy and definitely no problem. And uh, also when I have to put here a PCB from a radio uh, underneath, it uh, might be nice as well. But you know, the difference is what will you do um, when you do not have uh, a mobile phone? I mean, this PCB is a whole mobile phone and even if you take uh, um, a mod more modern one, you can get uh, the whole PCB underneath without any problems. But remember, if uh, we are talking about uh, radios, um, amateur radios, so that uh, what uh, we are doing here, then it is not only the PCB we have to put uh, underneath, because a thermal image can only be taken if uh, everything is really connected to um, you know the single PCB and uh, and the radio um, does uh, often has have more than only one or two or three PCBs so that means we cannot take the PCB out for testing because we do not have all the connections to make it working so therefore you you directly see the problem I cannot get a radio here underneath and uh, that uh, is the reason why um, I had in uh, the past my little my little uh, FLIR, so this one here, because uh, I can move it uh, around, but uh, that is not uh, so uh, ideal uh, as well, because you always have to hold it, which is definitely a problem to do all the needed analyzes. Yeah, and now see what I mean. First of all, first of all, I mean, this here is maximum so I cannot get it any higher so I can uh, put it uh, more uh, to a lower uh, level but I can't get it higher but here already it uh, starts so I can take uh, this uh, screw out and uh, then I can take uh, here the whole system I can turn it around and then I can fix it here okay so now I move here my thermal camera around and uh, right now I already have much more uh, distance here okay so a smaller radio will be no problem to get it underneath so you see this here is uh, my lab radio so that is what I use uh, for driving uh, power amplifiers or uh, whatever and uh, you see I can put it here entirely under uh, our uh, camera and now I can adjust the camera how uh, I would need it but uh, you directly see that it is definitely no problem uh, to uh, do uh, analysis um, in a radio uh, on the board which I can't take out so that is already really a huge advantage so that is not only dedicated to uh, mobile phone uh, repair and look here, I even get here a bigger radio underneath so I can range here uh, the whole system um, as uh, I need it. So I can here move uh, the boom and uh, that uh, shows 
that uh, I really will be able to test even uh, bigger devices uh, which uh, you know you need simply the distance uh, to uh, work on uh, okay so and that is really nice but okay you may say that uh, there will be radius which uh, are even bigger than here our Kenwood and uh, that is true in and then in that case maybe uh, that uh, the flexibility flexibility which uh, we have seen uh, right now would not be enough what can I do then and uh, yeah there is another feature which uh, can handle even bigger devices so let me demonstrate that Okay, so let's assume uh, this is a bigger radio which uh, we cannot uh, put underneath even uh, we have the full flexibility as we have seen it. Then we have here definitely an uh, additional feature and that is uh, quite uh, simple because our camera itself can be moved in uh, different uh, directions so we can do it uh, like uh, this and now again I can easily uh, adjust here my system exactly to the area which uh, I really want uh, to investigate and to test and therefore you see this here is definitely uh, a benchtop system um, I haven't seen yet because normally here the systems, the benchtop uh, systems are uh, dedicated to one high or maybe a little bit uh, flexibility but the flexibility which this system delivers is definitely awesome. If now the quality of uh, the analyzer, so I mean the thermal camera itself, is as good as a mechanical um, concept, then that could really be a game changer. Okay, now it is back to normal and uh, well, we all uh, have already uh, recognized that uh, this benchtop uh, system does not have a screen for itself so we really need uh, uh, to connect this system to the computer uh, to use the computer to use a special uh, software from Teslon and uh, of course we need to install the program to our computer that we can finally use the system and let's see how easy that works okay so that is uh, the web page here from uh, Teslong so that is uh, teslong.com so uh, very easy here, here you can uh, see uh, the brand name uh, Teslong and then we easily go here to uh, infrared uh, cameras and you see here is already our um, infrared uh, benchtop PCB thermal imaging uh, camera and of course we uh, go over and here is now uh, the most important uh, point that uh, we find here the link um, let me see if uh, we can get it here a little bit better into view uh, so here we uh, have uh, the link to download the needed software right so the Teslog TCP 100 benchtop PCB thermal imaging camera software download link to run our Teslong camera and uh, therefore let's go over and you directly see that uh, we uh, get here uh, the information that we can store this file and of course ah, by the way it is recommended to have a minimum Windows uh, 7 
and recommended is to use Windows 10. So I'm running here Windows 10 so that shouldn't be a problem. So um, I store of course the zip file and uh, let's see how we can go ahead. Okay and I've already unzipped here uh, our file and uh, here is uh, now all what uh, we should have. So here is uh, our setup and uh, so the uh, software is called Teslong Thermal Doctor. So that is the software and the only thing we need to do is uh, to uh, start the setup. Okay, so simply let's uh, start it and you see here welcome to Teslong uh, Thermal Doctor Setup Wizard and let's uh, follow along here. Uh, yeah, okay and to start installation we say yes and uh, it looks like uh, that is already done so we close it here and let's go over to the bench top okay so we are here on the desktop as you can see and you see that uh, here is our program Teslong Thermal Doctor. So let's see if we can run it. Ah, okay. Here it is already. So let's see what makes sense. So that might be a little bit uh, too big for our demonstration. Uh, purposes so maybe that uh, looks nice okay so that uh, seems to be nice but um, of course uh, the camera has uh, not been connected yet and you can uh, see it uh, down here so camera not connected I hope uh, you can read it it is a little bit difficult uh, to display it here but uh, I really try my very best to get it over okay so next step is to connect uh, the camera to the computer okay so that is a type C uh, connector and uh, that is uh, also a very nice um, so this uh, data cable is a very nice uh, quality so that is nice and uh, we have to connect it here uh, to the camera so we have to attach it here and then we can uh, put our cable here into this plastic piece which uh, yeah, that is not too bad. So let's see how it works out when we really work with the system. And uh, the only thing uh, what um, we get as uh, information is that uh, we need to press the button here. And you see it is already um, showing up. And uh, obviously the camera is already connected. So let's see what uh, we have here. Okay, so it is connected. Camera is connected. Uh, we uh, can see down here the camera uh, serial number. So we have green light and uh, you already see that uh, that must be a thermal image so we have here a kind of uh, orange and um, we can here switch in our uh, high temperature tracing and uh, well so you see um, it uh, is here moving all over uh, so that uh, is very cold here 
Uh, so uh, the highest temperature is here 18.9 so you see now 20 degrees so that is uh, nice and you really see that uh, it was easy to install and the system is here definitely uh, running. Okay, our system is up and running and uh, I have to admit it was quite easy to get it to that point that uh, we really can start and work with it. But okay, before we really go ahead we need to know a little bit what kind of camera um, do we have here in front of us. I mean, where is its uh, benchmark and uh, who is the competitor and to what do we need to compare it and how do we know if the price of uh, 799 dollar is cheap or is it horrible expensive so we really need to know a little bit more about what has been used here what is the technique behind and uh, well uh, is it really worth that money and so on and so on and so therefore we need to look a little bit into the specs and then we may see where the place in the benchmark is for this camera and then we might uh, be able to understand is it a fair price or is it horrible too expensive and that here is a little bit what the specs are telling us so the frame rate the NETD the maximum and minimum temperature of our system and of course the accuracy well I mean oh and of course uh, our resolution of uh, 260 times 200 IR thermal camera resolution so the problem is what does that mean I mean have you ever heard NETD so what kind of feature is it and what does that say about the quality of an infrared camera system and how does it uh, interrelate with uh, the resolution I mean resolution is something we all might uh, know from our digital camera uh, or from uh, our TV so we know that uh, if the resolution um, is getting uh, greater and greater that means we get a more sharp picture because we have more dots if you like to display um, little differences so if you only have some dots so low resolution then all the details um, are not able to come up so they are all vanished in in the in the dark I don't know so therefore we know a little bit that uh, a higher resolution is something what uh, makes a difference but what is it all about frames or NETD so that is something I believe we really have to look into okay and uh, what we have here is a picture taken with uh, two different uh, imaging um, uh, which was uh, two uh, different IR cameras and we see that uh, the left picture was taken with the NETD of uh, 60 millikelvin so MK means millikelvin and uh, the right picture is uh, taken with a camera uh, which has 80 millikelvin and uh, I believe you uh, definitely see uh, the difference so you see that uh, on uh, these pictures we have much more noise especially 
where uh, it is getting uh, more and more dark and uh, you might see here on uh, this picture that uh, where we have here only noise and uh, you cannot really see the details anymore on this picture you are definitely able to see that uh, here is an IC and uh, some other components around and uh, here this information is uh, all in the noise so you see NETD must be a very important uh, feature or spec which uh, obviously makes a difference so that means that uh, we always uh, come across the expression um, of NETD and uh, well when we look at uh, the technical details of uh, a thermal camera this expression stands for noise equivalent temperature difference so that means um, it is a measure for how well a thermal imaging detector is able to distinguish between very small differences in well it is more or less a thermal radiation in the image but with other word, words it means um, a camera with uh, a better um, NETD is able to distinguish better um, you know between um, a small temperature differences and that means that uh, not only the resolution is a very, very important fact also NETD is something very important well and having said uh, that uh, you know that uh, I use here my little Fleur or Fleur uh, Pro which uh, is really a nice uh, product and uh, if you've seen uh, my uh, last uh, video on uh, the MCO repair in uh, Yaesu FT857 uh, then uh, you have uh, seen that my little FLIR was uh, able to detect uh, the problem so therefore that uh, might be a good uh, starting point to be able uh, to understand uh, where uh, the Teslong camera is um, in comparison to the little Fleur or Fleur. So um, what you uh, uh, easily can see here is uh, that uh, the IR resolution is uh, 160 to uh, 120 compared to what we have here with our Teslong uh, where we have uh, 260 uh, to or times 200 so that means uh, the Teslong, Teslong does have a higher uh, resolution then um, we have here a frame rate of 8.7 Hertz and uh, the uh, Teslong has a frame rate of 25 Hertz so that is how fast you can move um, an object, a device, under the camera and uh, I will then demonstrate that to you when we um, start some experiments but uh, more interesting is to see that uh, we have here as you can see an NETD of uh, 150 millikelvin and uh, we have seen in um, our picture before that uh, this both uh, pictures here has been uh, taken with the camera on the right hand side 80 and you see the noise and on the left hand side 60 and you see the improvement between this both pictures having in mind that our bench top system here from uh, Teslong has 70 millikelvin which uh, seems to be compared here 
to the flora of Lear a very good uh, value, but on the other hand, uh, the Fleer is uh, the, the Fleer Pro, we have to say. So uh, that is a top line uh, product here from um, the Fleur One product products. And uh, well, that is uh, 400. And uh, as we know, this Teslong benchtop system is 799. So that is a price difference. And therefore, it is clear that uh, these figures must be better, so that must be an improvement. But if we go more or less in the same category of, let's say, more or less the same resolution and more or less the same NETD, what is then the price we find on the market? And therefore, it seems to be um, curious to to me so it seems to be interesting to uh, see how the Fleur X series so uh, X5 X6 and 8 8 X8 is um, competing with uh, our Tesla uh, system just to see what uh, it means price wise okay and here we have an answer so the X uh, uh, EX5 uh, or E5X, whatever it is called. So you see, we have a resolution of uh, 160 times 120. So that means that it is uh, lower than our 260 times 200. Um, and uh, you see, there is 100 millikelvin on uh, NETD which is higher than what we have with the Tesla. And we see already a price of 1,299 euro. So dollar and euro is uh, not uh, really a big difference. Uh, so maybe that would be, I don't know, maybe $1,100. I'm not uh, quite sure, but uh, you see uh, a flare um, is, you know, so that is coming closer to the Tesla and it is already, let's say, $1,100 or maybe $1,000, uh, but uh, it is not beating uh, the Tesla along from uh, the specs. And then, of, of course, if we see the E6, then uh, we are coming much closer uh, if it comes to resolution. So the A6 is uh, 240 by 180 and it has 60 millikelvin. So that is better than the Tesla. But we are already at 1000, let's say $1,700. Yeah. And then, of course, the E8. So that is definitely a better camera. So we have better specs, as you can see, higher resolution and a much better NETD. So by the way, you see as lower the NETD is, as better the camera is able to distinguish uh, little tempera temperature uh, differences, right? So, but you see, that is much more expensive uh, to go for a FLIR um, X series here. Okay, and even uh, if I compare it uh, directly here, uh, you see it, uh, so they are asking for 2,319 uh, euro, which might be, I don't know, $2,000, let's say two thousand dollars so that is uh, the online shop uh, from uh, FLIR and that is uh, FLIR E6 and uh, yeah so if uh, we want to see here the figures uh, I mean that is what uh, we all are already have seen uh, before and I believe it is uh, really too small to read 
but uh, once again it is 240, 180 and you see the uh, NETD is uh, 60 so um, that is uh, a little bit better a little bit than uh, the test long but uh, you see the price is 2319 so that might give us a feeling what it means okay but uh, FLIR also has the ETS uh, 320 which uh, is also a benchtop uh, system made for uh, PCB um, investigations and troubleshooting and so on and you see the price which is uh, including tax 3000 euro and uh, well of course so don't know if you can read it uh, the ER resolution is 320 by 240 so that is higher and it is a, a NETD of uh, 60 millikelvin so that is a bit better than uh, the Tesla but the price is much higher so that all so that all what uh, we have seen right now may give us a feeling um, where this camera I mean the Tesla is in the benchmark and uh, we can now uh, decide if uh, it is uh, worth the money feature wise and price wise and now what we need uh, to know is is the quality of this system uh, what we are looking for is it really doing its job because not only the camera is what uh, needs to be uh, good and needs to be uh, sufficient specs to do the job also this um, program this Tesla thermal doctor so the software the application we have here is that able to do the job so that is important and that will then finally tell us if it is a game changer or if it is crap and before we go deeper in all this uh, application stuff and how it works uh, left and right you know so I just want to show you one really nice feature because we have the one second button so I mean this is uh, obvious uh, our FLIR which is here under our uh, Tesla and of course we see that we have here hotspots for sure no question but uh, it could be uh, a PCB with many different hotspots and uh, with one click here we can directly identify uh, the hotspot and you see here we have uh, 21.6 degrees centigrade right and you see here the rest is around 16 degree so that is really a nice feature the one second feature to determine directly where we have hotspots and even uh, that the temperature is not so huge different right so because that is only um, just 22 uh, degree which uh, is not so much it is not burning hot you know and therefore this feature is really nice just seeing where the hot spots are but okay that's it let's start step by step into our uh, thermal doctor uh, uh, what is it software okay but first first so let's go over the application here so that uh, we understand a little bit better how it works and uh, as far as I can say it it is uh, really straightforward so uh, here we see that uh, our cam is connected and uh, what we see here is um, yeah so <laughs> the waiting screen or so nothing is under the IR camera so you can see it if I put my hand under it um, 
So we have uh, here a reset button uh, where we can uh, start a new um, session if you like and uh, then we can here rotate the camera. So ah, let me put here a little uh, circuit uh, under it so it is not connected uh, to mains. So maybe the first what uh, we uh, can see is uh, we have talked a bit about the frame rate. So this camera has uh, 25 Hertz and uh, you see if I move it not too fast, if I move it faster it uh, becomes a little bit uh, tricky but with uh, 25 Hertz you can move a PCB slowly um, and uh, yeah, focus on different uh, areas of the PCB so that is with 25 Hertz frame rate um, easily possible. So you see there is uh, a nice and uh, sl a smooth um, movement here so there is no interruption in the move here so you see that uh, is working quite nice and that is 25, um, 25 Hertz frame rate so that is good it is a really a plus um, over the 9 Hertz we have seen on the FLIR um, 1 Pro so my uh, camera here which uh, I've used until and uh, yeah, so the flexibility here uh, with uh, this camera, we have seen it that uh, we really can move um, our our boom here in uh, any direction and uh, different highs. So that uh, is, uh, as we have seen it, a very very nice uh, feature. Uh, one hand, but you need to adapt your camera maybe and you see when I rotate it you see that uh, I'm now rotating uh, obviously the PCB but uh, to get it in the right view if you use the camera in another position you ca can rotate uh, the camera software wise how you need it that you have the same same view as you see the situation. So that is uh, quite um, straightforward. Uh, I like that. Then, yeah, let me switch on here this uh, board. Um, it is not connected, so hang on a second. Yeah, now I have uh, connected it to uh, the power supply and um, well, what we can see here, so that is a reflection and that is something we really have uh, always with uh, PCBs, you cannot entirely uh, avoid it. But uh, the nice thing here, we see that that is a reflection and um, I can, for instance, our high temperature tracing put here on that uh, point and you see it is directly going to that point and uh, that is definitely uh, a wrong test point. So um, that is not uh, very nice. But on the other hand what we already see is that here our four uh, five driver ICs so that is a display, um, an LED uh, display driver and you see that the driver are coming up in temperature and when we go here uh, to the middle so I mean here is an IC and here is an IC and uh, not sure if you can see it here on screen um, but I can see that uh, we have here an IC that here is an IC here I can see a capacitor and uh, here we have a voltage regulator and that is 
hear our reflection. Well, um, so we uh, clearly see that uh, we have here 20 degrees and here 18, so we only have 18, uh, we only have approximately 2 uh, degree on a temperature difference. And you see uh, how already, I believe you can see that the resolution is uh, quite nice. So if we go now and take, for instance, this button here, we have an arrow where we can mark for later this hotspot. Or, of course, we can we can um, mark this here that we know, okay, that uh, is a reflection and uh, we can uh, add, for instance, here a text and we say reflection, for instance, and uh, then we know that uh, it is here in this area, so that is now in um, is now stored. Well, so of course we can change here a uh, different uh, FARP um, variations. So here rainbow and uh, so that is called summer and that is called desert. It is sometimes uh, really helpful if you have this different uh, color sets uh, because sometimes it is uh, tricky to find uh, hot spots. But now here already uh, let me see, let me take away here our arrows but what I wanted to show you and that is already a nice feature. So of course here on the right hand side I have a high temperature tracing and when I press it so we directly see here this hotspot what in reality is a reflection and not a hotspot. So that is a wrong temperature um, measuring. So now we can move it out of uh, our field of view and now you see that uh, the temperature tracing is quite nicely showing here uh, where the hottest position is. And let's assume that we cannot really determine uh, where is it. And I mean, this is an easy PCB, so that is not high density. So we know um, a mobile phone or even uh, our uh, PCBs for modern um, ham radios really have high density and there it is much more complicated to really distinguish where is now the highest uh, tempera temperature area and that is what I've already shown you. Now we can adjust it here and we see okay here is our hotspot and as I already said that is really a nice feature. But on the other hand we have seen we have the reflection over here and you see directly that uh, our uh, high temperature tracing is pointing to this um, yeah, reflection. So there is another feature which we can use and that is here the rectangle angle uh, area inspection and uh, that really helps us so we can um, enlarge it like this and now you see where we have the re, uh, reflection is now taken out. So I mean still we have here uh, our automatic temperature uh, tracing but this is no longer uh, interesting to us because we have here now an additional one and now we can work here without any reflections. And what you, what you can see uh, as well, what you can see as well, um, that the um, 
resolution is uh, so brilliant. I mean, we have only an IR camera. We do not have, uh, you know, an additional uh, live camera, which uh, we see with, uh, for instance, many um, FLIR products. Um, but, I mean, the problem is if you only have this distance, and that is very important to know, um, these benchtop systems are designed to go very, very close to uh, the components. So I really can uh, literally go down to the IC and I still can focus it, right? Um, but when you have uh, these uh, double uh, cameras, so we have here an IR camera, camera and uh, a normal camera, and these both cameras needs to align on uh, the object where you uh, want uh, to see the temperature. Well, and you know, there is another benchtop system on the market and that is only one high. And only this high, there it works with, you know, the IR camera and the normal camera. So the live camera, so that is matched and the pictures are not uh, disaligned. Okay. The problem is, if you have a system, a bench system, where you only have one high, you do not have the flexibility. And another reason is why um, other manufacturers uh, have a second camera with it because they use, so I have the, the second um, benchtop system in, in mind, so that has a very bad uh, IR resolution and they, com uh, they um, really use the live camera to, yeah, you know, to um, to hide a little bit the bad uh, IR camera quality. So, you know, therefore, if you have a high IR resolution, I mean, I believe you really, you really can see uh, the different components here on the board and uh, it is no problem uh, to point, you know, uh, um, a component which would have really high temperature. And let me let me show you this. Okay, we have this picture, and now uh, let me go here to my FLIR. Hope you uh, can uh, see it. I mean that is an uh, infrared picture as well, or um, image. And of course, uh, we have here down below uh, the live camera. But uh, I hope you already can see that uh, there is a difference uh, because you have here much more noise. And in the noise, it is difficult to see um, components and uh, what's really going on. So if you're really unlucky, it depends on the situation on the board, that uh, all is very blurry and uh, you do not really see uh, the details you need to see. Let me go back up here to our to our Teslong um, image and uh, I believe you uh, definitely can see that uh, that is uh, a difference and uh, that is what uh, we discussed uh, when we were talking about NETD uh, value or figure. So with the Tesla we have uh, 70 uh, micro Kelvin and we have seen in the specs from uh, the FLIR that uh, it was 150 millikelvin and uh, that is definitely uh, a difference. So um, therefore you have here definitely uh, much more details and that is uh, really nice. 
Well, um, another feature what uh, we uh, have, I mean, uh, I believe uh, this is clear here, our rect uh, angle um, inspection, so that uh, we are able to sort ours out uh, reflections, so that is one what we can do. Uh, but it's not only um, a rect angle which uh, we can use, we can uh, also use uh, a polygon to place here, well, how we, we need it. It uh, always uh, depends what we want uh, to see, for instance. And uh, now, come on. So now you see, I can check this area uh, as well. So you see, everything is uh, at least uh, possible. And uh, that is quite uh, nice because now I'm testing the temperature with our high temperature uh, tracing system here in uh, this area. So with the uh, polygon, it is uh, very um, nice that I can design um, the areas on the PCB I want to observe uh, because I have recognized that maybe something in that area uh, is a little bit funny. But additional to that, I can set more um, spot uh, test points so that uh, I can observe different temperatures on the board. So that is uh, under some circumstances uh, nice as well. And let me see, uh, additional to that, I have a so-called high temperature alarm. And I can set here the high temperature and it is set for the moment in time to 21 uh, degrees C, right? And I can um, adjust it, let's say, to 30, for instance. And uh, now when I activate it, which it is right now, if the temperature would go over 30 degree, I would get an acoustic alarm, which is very helpful. Normally, I would set this uh, high temperature alarm to, let me say, 70, 80 degrees C, because if a component on a board is uh, really higher than 80 degrees, then I would assume that uh, something is wrong with uh, the heatsink. Something might be wrong because normally components are designed, except from some uh, exceptions, of course, but uh, normally we have temperatures, let's say, 70 degrees C. Normally not uh, much more. So I would uh, set here the temperature to 70, 80 degrees. And if 80 degrees gives me a high temperature alarm, I would directly know, okay, let's inspect what it is. Maybe it is fine. Maybe that uh, this uh, component is designed for even higher temperatures, but it could be everything. So uh, this temperature alarm is from my point of view, really, really a nice feature. And as you have seen uh, here, our uh, polygon, you can move it everywhere. And of course, uh, you uh, can change it. So if you need, you uh, can it really adapt to the situation where you need it. And uh, that is really, really a nice feature. And uh, of course, you can uh, put it away and uh, the same is here with the additional um, temperature spots what uh, we have uh, set here. So you see it, that is uh, also very easy to, um, you know, change if you like. 
Okay, then uh, it is uh, sometimes uh, really important, so let me switch it off. What we have very, very often uh, is that uh, we have a board and I have an experiment. We will do it uh, in a second. Um, if you have a board where you have recognized that uh, something is wrong. So remember my last uh, video. So video 238. So that was the Yaesu FTF uh, 857, which uh, was in a thunderstorm and uh, get, got uh, a lightning stroke. And uh, we recognized uh, directly from the beginning that in standby the radio is uh, consuming, pulling too much current. So that is uh, already an indication that uh, something is leaking and uh, how do you proceed to find the area which component is at least leaking so that is not that easy but with a camera like this it is really easy because you can here adjust uh, the uh, temperature so that everything goes more or less in the dark. So let's say uh, we have taken away uh, all the noise because what we know um, here this uh, all is normal temperature. So you see 19 point, uh, oh, what is it? 19.6 uh, degrees. So that is environment temperature. So you can also call that noise because that is no temperature from components, okay? So that means we really can darken it here, like so, for instance. And now, when I switch on the device, you can easily see where the temperature is coming up and what you recognize uh, that uh, here, for instance, we getting very quickly a higher temperature, but you see even that is not the real hot spot because the temperature is not exploding. And normally we would uh, set it here into our rect uh, angle because we know that we have a reflection which we do not want. And now we have here our automatic temperature tracing and we see, yeah, we have definitely here a hotspot, but it is not a real hotspot. So that is normal uh, working temperature of the IC, okay? So therefore um, we can very nicely distinguish what's really going on and if we would have a real high um, hotspot where a component um, uh, would go into the wrong direction, let me call it that way, so that means if it is broken then you would uh, definitely see it as well. So you see you have so many uh, diagnoses uh, options to be able to really determine hotspots and even leaking components. And again, the last video we had a leaking MCU. And uh, so that means the MCU did not got hot. So it, it is not the situation that I was able to put, uh, for instance, freezer spray or alcohol to the component and would directly see, oh, this component uh, is getting hot, so that is my problem. No, so the temperature difference was very, very low. So watch video 238 where we identified uh, really the leaking MCU by flare, right? And uh, I believe our Teslong can do that 
even better. And now where we have uh, discussed here uh, already many of uh, the functions of the application. Uh, well, I believe uh, we have discussed much or most of what we have here. What I just wanted to show you is uh, also the 3D analysis. And that is really nice. Again, what you see here is in the 3D uh, view, you see here a hotspot. I mean, okay, okay, let's go back. So that is here, of course, uh, our reflection. But that is what we have seen before. So we know that is not a real temperature. But what I wanted to show you is if that would not be at least a reflection, then we can very easily distinguish real hotspots from normal temperatures. I mean, you see here in front, so that uh, here are our ICs. And of course, you can see that uh, they are coming up uh, as well in our 3D uh, analysis. But you see, okay, that is a normal working temperature. But here, that is a hot spot, if it would not be a reflection, of course. But I think you uh, got uh, the idea. So then you would directly see where the hot spot is. It is very easy to identify. So that is another nice tool. And uh, I mean, yeah, so here you see different temperatures. Okay, but you do not see which one is, if, if, if you wouldn't have uh, the uh, high temperature tracing on, you know, you once click here onto our 3D analysis and you directly have an idea what's going on. And that, I think, is really nice. Then there is another uh, feature, so that is called comparison. And the idea here is that if you have a working unit, so you temperature alarm, very nice, switch it off, okay. Uh, comparison is if you have uh, two same uh, units, you can place now here on the right side, you could place uh, the same unit which uh, is working on, on the left side, your uh, device under test or in question. And then you can compare because uh, you have now this line here in the middle and you see exactly uh, where uh, we have differences. So that is a nice feature as well. Additional, we have a circuit design feature. So that is uh, more for development. So if uh, a new product uh, gets uh, dev developed and uh, you may have the first uh, working test samples and uh, engineering in the factory can uh, check uh, if uh, the heatsink uh, is working as uh, calculated and if everything is fine. And so they uh, have here a lot of uh, analysis which uh, they can uh, here adapt to the system. And uh, you see it starts here already uh, working. So you have here more than one graph which you can um, yeah, put to your circuit, so different areas which you want uh, to observe. And then you see very little a difference over the time. So that is a nice uh, tool if uh, a new circuit has been designed and uh, needs uh, to get uh, evalu evaluated that uh, everything is fine, um, quality control um, and so on. So therefore that is not really something we would use. So we would more use our troubleshoot um, mode uh, to do all the things 
we need to do. Okay, and uh, here we have uh, a little experiment we uh, can do. So, of course, this is a donor board, and uh, yeah, it is uh, a power amplifier out uh, of uh, a radio. And uh, well, uh, the nice uh, thing is um, we can test the capability of uh, our Teslong uh, IR camera here, and of course, the software. So uh, I've already told you, you uh, normally know what uh, a board would uh, draw. And normally this board here uh, would uh, draw nothing if you connect uh, power to it, because uh, normally it uh, needs its, its uh, different um, voltages uh, to get uh, switched on. So uh, only connecting the voltage to the board would not directly mean that a board would pull current. And this board here is uh, normally, under normal condition, if you connect it to power, it would not draw any current. But and that is a nice uh, thing, what uh, you always should have in mind. Let's uh, take this here as an example, so I switch this off because it is a little bit uh, confusing. So, 6 volt, so I've already reduced uh, the voltage to not damage something here on the board because I've recognized that something is wrong because when I switch it on you see with uh, 6 volt it is already drawing 20 milliamps and 20 milliamps is very very low and that means uh, something uh, must definitely be wrong here on the board uh, but I can promise you I can do whatever I want I cannot feel here that something is going hot but your system won't work so again watch video um, 287 uh, uh, um, was it 287 so the last video uh, on the Yaesu FT857 which uh, was in the thunderstorm and you see that the MCU I was not able to feel it that the MCU were getting hot and that is a problem here we have the same I cannot feel anything so let's put this system this PCB under our camera and let's see if the camera will be able to find it. Okay, first I have uh, simply put it here under our camera, but it is not uh, switched on. So the first uh, what uh, I want to discuss is you see that uh, we have reflections and we know that uh, reflections are sometimes a little bit difficult to handle. Many reflections uh, we can simply get uh, away by tilting a little bit to the board. So that is what uh, I have done here. So I've tilted a little bit and uh, you see that uh, the main reflection here where we have the heatsink from uh, the power um, transistor here on the board. So that is now more or less um, gone away. So of course you can uh, take here a little bit tape and uh, put it for instance uh, which one is it? So you can put it there to uh, reduce the reflections uh, that uh, you are able to do what you need to do simpler. And of course yeah we have uh, another two reflections uh, here
Where? Where are we? Yeah, so that is that one and we have here a reflection and of course you can uh, cover it uh, as well if you like. So this pose here if you like. But it is not really necessary because uh, we know uh, that uh, these are reflections and uh, now simply because I have covered a lot of uh, reflections you see that now uh, the image, uh, the infrared image changes a little bit and uh, now I can take away because uh, we know 18 degrees here on the board so you know that we can we can call it noise okay so we reduce it here let's say not sure if uh, this is enough so let me check if I can reduce uh, reflections maybe a little bit more not sure I mean here's a reflection on uh, our heatsink is uh, quite dominant so I've covered it a little bit so that is what uh, you always can do and sometimes you need to do it so um, I do it here a little bit uh, more in detail that you see all the options you have right anyways so oh, now I reduce it here a little bit more so that uh, we really go into the dark and uh, okay now a question is what happens now let me do something um, different so we need one spot put it down there at uh, well, we move it here a little bit so that is uh, 17 point seven degree C and uh, now let's switch on the board and let's see what happens Wow have you seen that now of course I make it a little bit more visible like so once again I switch it uh, off and I switch it on and look at this we directly have here a hot spot and you see if I go with my pointer over it it is only 23.6 degrees C versus 18 degrees C so believe me that is something you can not feel so this is a little capacitor down on the board which is not that short but it is leaking so you know a capacitor should be high resistance should be open for you know DC but this one is leaking and this was causing a problem on the board so that the transmitter section was not working quite right and that is something you would not see without a infrared camera and you need a camera which is really sensitive and has a lot of analyzes, uh, analyzing uh, tools which uh, our test long uh, thermal doctor application has and uh, sometimes it is it might be even difficult uh, to see so let me reduce the voltage so you have seen um, I've used 6 volt now let me switch to 4 volt and let's switch it on again and now you see it is coming up here it is but now the temperature difference is even lower so eh, is it really can you really see it let me switch it off 
yes, maybe, but in these cases, sometimes it is uh, very helpful if you can switch here to another color. So let me switch it off and uh, maybe you can uh, take away here a little bit uh, the noise. And now, once again, I switch it in and you see directly where uh, our hotspot is. And that is more clear to see um, with uh, this different uh, color than uh, when we go back here to, so that is iron, so cold, and uh, that is called rainbow. And on rainbow, our problem is uh, even easier to see. And now I have only 12 milliamp uh, temperature, uh, uh, so 12 milliamp current draw at 4 volt DC. Okay, and that is really not a lot. So I've switched it off. You see the normal temperature here on board is 17.5 and 12 milliamps and it is 19. So you see that is almost nothing. But you directly see where the problem is on the board. And uh, of course if you are not able to see it what it is but uh, I believe um, if we reduce it here a little bit more, you already can see that uh, we have here. Uh, therefore, I need to open it completely. And now that is definitely the wrong color. So I would take iron right now. And uh, you can see that uh, we have here two uh, components, but the hotspot was uh, beneath. So there, there it is. And I have my pointer on it. And you see how nicely my pointer is glowing. And I can go down here with my finger to the situation on the board. And when I now go here down, uh, here we have some bigger uh, resistors, but down there we have a little capacitor and that is the one what is leaking and you see so that little guy there okay so that and uh, you see that uh, is really the beauty of uh, our thermal doctor Teslon camera it is really helping to find a uh, problematic and not easy to find uh, issues on the board. Okay, so what is our conclusion? $799 uh, is definitely not cheap, but uh, I believe uh, which with uh, its uh, features, so with uh, the resolution and the NETD and uh, the field of view, um, it is uh, really uh, a nice uh, camera so I would say that is uh, a good um, value for money so you have seen um, that uh, it is working so maybe there are some little issues on uh, the uh, program on the application so that is uh, I believe uh, version 1.1 and uh, there we will uh, get updates uh, all the time and I believe that uh, some um, features can uh, easily be uh, added to it but uh, anyways as it is right now so on one hand uh, the mechanical setup here and uh, the flexibility uh, the quality of uh, the camera itself and uh, also our uh, thermal doctor application um, is very useful um, in benchmark uh, the camera is not too expensive and uh, well I mean it is the first impression um, we need uh, to use it over a longer time for sure 
but uh, I would say it is really a nice addition to my bench and it definitely will help me with uh, my uh, uh, special challenges with uh, bigger radius which needs to get under a thermal imaging uh, system so I do not see a point which uh, would um, uh, where I would say no that is nothing for me no it is definitely the another way around I think it is really a good addition to my bench and uh, yeah I have shown you what uh, I have discovered and um, you have seen there is not much on the negative side so therefore I believe from the first view I would uh, recommend it and uh, well that's it for the day a lot of information hope you enjoyed it a little bit and thanks for watching catch you next time bye